Have you heard? It's all the rage. The wit, the sense, the, the jokes. jokes. I chortled. I guffawed. I laughed until I choked. Put down your cell phone, turn off the Xbox, just for a short while, and join us for something your great-grandmother might have laughed at, or perhaps blushed at, hmm? From famous authors to long-lost gems, Edwardian Entertainments explores the short stories of a past century, wherever they may be found. Today we bring you another story from Saki, The Toys of Peace. As adapted by Julie Hoverson and produced by Reese Torres Miller. Harvey, just read this about children's toys, please. It exactly carries out some of my ideas about influence and upbringing. The National Peace Council has grave objections to presenting our boys with regiments of fighting men, batteries of guns and squadrons of dreadnoughts. Boys, the council admits, naturally love fighting and all the panoply of war. But that is no reason for encouraging and perhaps giving form to their primitive instincts. Hmm. The Children's Welfare Exhibition opens at Olympia in three weeks' time, and the Peace Council promised to include alternatives for parents in the shape of an exhibition of peace toys. Where? There. Ah. In front of a re representation of the Peace Palace at The Hague will be grouped not miniature soldiers, but miniature civilians. Not guns, but plows and the tools of industry. Hmm. It is hoped that manufacturers may take a hint from the exhibit. The idea is certainly an interesting and very well-meaning one. Whether it would succeed well in practice... We must try. You are coming down to us at Easter, and you always bring the boys some toys, so it will be an excellent opportunity for you to inaugurate the new experiment. My dear sister, you want me to... Buy any little toys and models that have special bearing on civilian life, in its more peaceful aspects. Of course, you must explain the toys to the children and interest them in the new idea. They didn't need an explanation of the Siege of Adrianople toy from Susan, did they? That's the trouble. They already knew all the uniforms and flags, and even the names of the commanders. And when I heard them one day using what seemed to be the most objectionable language, they said it was Bulgarian words of command. Bulgarian? Of course it may have been. But at any rate, I took the toy away from them. Now I shall expect your Easter gift to give quite a new impulse and direction to the children's minds. Eric is not eleven yet, and Bertie is only nine and a half, so they are really at a most impressionable age. There is primitive instinct to be taken into consideration, you know, and hereditary tendencies as well. Yes, yes. One of our great uncles fought in the most intolerant fashion at Inkerman. He was specially mentioned in dispatches, I believe. And our great-grandfather... Smashed all his Whig neighbours' hothouses when the Great Reform Bill was passed. It's no excuse. Still, as you say, they are at an impressionable age. I will do my best. Don't get into any mischief. Your uncle will be here any minute. She said he would bring the very latest things in toys. Albanian soldiers! Nonsense! Some eye camel corps! Albanians have jolly uniforms and they fight all day long. And all night too, when there's a moon. But the country's rocky, so they've got no cavalry. You want cavalry, don't you? Camels? I suppose. He's here! It's a jolly large box. But it's red. Binions for sure. Happy Easter. Don't you two look just like a picture postcard? We went to church, sir. 
Of course, of course. What else is Easter for? A visit with our favourite uncle who brings us lovely big red boxes. <laughs> Just you wait and see what I have for you. Make sure this Excelsior doesn't get all over the place. You know your mother. Hmm. Now, aha. There now. You know what that is? A fort? It isn't. It's the palace of Mepret of Albania. It's got no windows, you see, so the passers-by can't fire in at the royal family. It's actually a municipal dustbin. You see, all the refuse and litter of a town is collected there, instead of lying about and injuring the health of the citizens. Oh. Good. And that is a distinguished civilian, John Stuart Mill. He was an authority on political economy. Why? Well, he wanted to be. He thought it was a useful thing to be. Hmm. And this is a model of the Manchester branch of the Young Women's Christian Association. Are there any lions? <laughs> lions? Of course not. Why would you ask that? I've been reading Roman history and thought that where you found Christians, there might be lions. There are no lions. Here is another civilian, Robert Rakes, the founder of Sunday schools. And here is a model of a municipal wash house. That lead figure is a sanitary inspector. This one is a district councillor. And this one is an official of the local government board. What does he do? He, uh sees to things connected with his department. This box with a slit in it is a ballot box. Votes are put into it at election times. What is put into it at other times? Nothing. This little lead figure is Mrs Hemans, a renowned poetess, and this is Roland Hill, who introduced the system of penny postage. This is Sir John Herschel, the eminent astrologer. Are we to play with these civilian figures? Of course. They are toys. They are meant to be played with. But how? Hmm. Ah, you might make two of them contest a seat in Parliament and have an election. With rotten eggs and free fights and ever so many broken heads. And noses all bleeding and everybody drunk as can be. Nothing of the kind. Nothing in the least like that. Votes will be put in the ballot box and the mayor will count them. And he will say which has received the most votes. And then the two candidates will thank him for presiding and each will say that the contest has been conducted throughout in the pleasantest and most straightforward fashion. And they part with expressions of mutual esteem. There's a jolly game for you boys to play. I never had such toys when I was young. I don't think we'll play with them just now. We've got history to study. We've got to learn something about the Bourbon period in France. The Bourbon period. We've got to know something about Louis XIV. I've learnt the names of all the principal battles already. There were, of course, some battles fought during his reign, but I fancy the accounts of them were much exaggerated. News was very unreliable in those days, and there were practically no war correspondence, so generals and commanders could magnify every little skirmish they engaged in till they reached the proportions of decisive battles. Louis was really famous now as a landscape gardener. The way he laid out Versailles was so much admired that it was copied all over Europe. Do you know anything about Madame de Barry? She was another great lover of gardening. Didn't she have her head chopped off? I believe the well-known Rose du Barry was named after her. And now I think you had better play for a little and leave your lessons till later. Harvey, whatever are you on about? I've been wondering whether it would be possible to compile a history for use in elementary schools in which there should be no prominent mention of battles, massacres, murderous intrigues and violent deaths. Problematic at best, I fear. The York and Lancaster period and the Napoleonic era would present considerable difficulties. And the Thirty Years' War would entail something of a gap if you left it out altogether. Still, 
It would be something gained if, at a highly impressionable age, children could be got to fix their attention on the invention of calico printing instead of the Spanish Armada or the Battle of Waterloo. Are the boys having fun with the new toys? I left them to it. I suppose it is about time to go and have a peek. That is Louis the Fourteenth, the one in knee breeches that Uncle said invented Sunday schools. It isn't a bit like him, but he'll have to do. We'll give him a purple coat from my paint box by and by. And red heels. That is Madame de Maintenon. That one he called Mrs. Haymans. She begs Louis not to go on this expedition. But he turns a deaf ear. He takes Marshall's sacks with him. And we must pretend they are thousands of men with them. The watchword is qui vive. And the answer is... Le tête moi. That was one of his favourite remarks, you know. They land at Manchester in the dead of the night. And a Jacobite conspirator gives them the keys of the fortress. Oh no, the dustbin. Louis orders his troops to surround the young women's Christian association and sees the lot of them. One's back at the Louvre and the girls are mine, he exclaims. He must use Mrs. Heyman again for one of the girls. She says, never, and stabs Marshall Sachs to the heart. Oh, he bleeds dreadfully. I'm almost out of red ink. I shall have to find some more if we want a proper massacre. Soldiers rush in and avenge his death with the utmost savagery. A hundred girls are killed. That's the last of it. And the surviving 500 are dragged off to the French ships. I have lost a marshal, says Louis, but I do not go back empty-handed. Oh. So? Oh, Eleanor. What? We have simply begun too late. Once, Once again, again, we must sign off and go our separate ways. But we'll be here again, again next month. month. Let's, Let's call, call it a date. date. Tonight's story, The Toys of Peace, was written by Saki, adapted by Julie Hoverson, and sound and mastering was done by Reese Torres Miller. In tonight's episode, Uncle Harvey was Michael Hudson, Eleanor Bope was Jennifer Dixon, Eric was Thomas Hudson, Bertie was James Hudson. The music was Anne de Pelernage by Franz Liszt, played by Robert Poli, found on archive.org. The opening and closing credits used the music of The Entertainer by Scott Joplin, available through amclassical.com, and the opening voices included Glenn Hallstrom, Tanya Milajevich, Gwendolyn Jensen Woodard, Lothar Tuppen, Julie Hoverson, and Carrie Ayers. Russell Gold was the announcer. This is distributed under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike Non-Commercial Clauses. Feel free to pass it around, but don't try to make money on it. This is copyright 2011 to Julie Hoverson and Reality Productions.